This is Michael from Burnaby, BC, Canada, and he's going to college for the first time. He has saved money to pay for this program and is excited about taking the first step towards his future career. Michael is also excited to meet new people and make new friends. He has seen lots of movies about the college experience, but that's not really for him. Don't get me wrong, Mike is a fun-loving guy, but his priority is to learn what is needed for his job. Mike, work, Mike works hard for the next few years, attends all his lectures, and stays awake almost all the time. He studies hard to pass his final exams. Graduation arrives and Michael gets to throw his hat up in the air and celebrate. His hard work is about to pay off. The new job arrives and Michael has a whole new learning curve to navigate. His college experience has not fully prepared him for the workplace. He does not need to cram for tests. He does not need to memorize facts. Everyone was working in a team. The work involves solving real world problems and there is no preset procedure to follow. Michael is not prepared for this workplace and has to work hard to adjust to the expectations. My education didn't prepare me for this, thinks Michael, as he works late on a Friday evening again. I wish I could travel back in time and learn these skills while I was studying in college. What if Michael's program incorporated problem-based learning, or PBL? Problem-based learning is a dynamic classroom approach in which students actively explore real-world problems and challenges and acquire a deeper knowledge. PBL can also be described as an instructional strategy that focuses on actively engaging learners through the process of problem solving. PBL focuses students on a real life problem. A problem is posed to the class or group. Students discuss the challenge and come up with a list of questions. They now research, collaborate and create a solution to the problem. PBL should be accompanied with skill based training. As skills are improved, the problems posed become more challenging. PBL works well when alternated with practicums. The workplace experience reinforces the relevance of problem-based learning. So what are the roles of the educator and the learner in PBL? The educator will prepare a real-world problem from the future profession of the class. The educator will outline the project requirements, timeline, and agree the assessment criteria with input from the students. Groups may naturally form within the class or may be assigned by the educator. From here, the role of the educator is to facilitate the learner. The educator will act as a tutor, available to listen to discussions and provide feedback or encourage ideas as they develop. The educator will also provide the students with tools for effective teamwork. These tools could include a work plan with assigned tasks and deadlines for the group members. Step one, discovery. The learners read and discuss the problem and suggest solutions. One student leads the group as chairperson. Another student takes notes of what is said as secretary. There may also be a board writer. These roles will alternate as in for each round of PBL. Two, define the problem. The learners will identify what they know and what they need to know. What is known is collected and divided into categories. For example, theories, experience, causes and consequences. What is known as formulation into questions that identify the required information. These are the learning goals. They will assign tasks to the group members and agree timelines. This is the end of the first meeting. Step three, research. Each student will now research what they need to know. This could take many forms, including an interview with an expert, searching online, or even reading from the library. This research is formatted into a short report with references to sources. Step four. At the second meeting, the learners will summarize their findings. Peer learning can now occur. A solution is formed from the findings with disagreements discussed with the tutor. This solution is outlined in an appropriate format agreed with the tutor. This solution is subsequently square shared with the tutor for feedback and evaluation. The compilation of this solution may require further meetings for the group, depending on the complexity of the problem and the solution. Step five, each group presents their solution to the class. Each pre presentation will be followed by a question and answer session. This allows students to learn from other groups. What are the pros and cons of problem-based learning? Pros, learners are required to think in a solution-focused way. 
This approach is similar to what graduates will encounter in the workplace. Students learn to collaborate with teammates. Learners are actively involved in learning. Students also learn how to research independently. Presentation and communication skills are also developed in this approach. Cons. Students can experience anxiety when the problem is too challenging for their skill level. Hardworking students may become frustrated with teammates that devote minimal time to their work. Students who miss a meeting have a hard time catching up with the group. Imagine how our friend Michael would feel after graduating a program with problem-based learning. He would know the content required for the job, just like his original course. He would also know how to problem solve in a team environment. He has developed skills to manage teammates and in the future subordinates. Michael's PBL education is based on doing and presenting to or teaching classmates. Mike is likely to retain about 90% of what he learned. I'm betting on Mike successfully finishing work each Friday on time and spending his free time enjoying life. What about Mike's social life? Well, he's still friends with many of his classmates. All these group projects brought them closer together. It may not follow the Hollywood model for college experience, but Mike couldn't be happier with the result of his investment.